So now let us see the second important part that is the root. The root is also a very important part of the plant as like the stem and leaf. We discussed the importance of stem and the leaf. Now let us see the root. Root, it has the main function of anchoring the plant into the soil. So plant, it holds the soil with the help of the root. Okay. Now let us see some interesting facts about the root. Here we have listed the points, importance, importance of the root, monocot and dicot roots, and types of roots, relation between roots and venation. So the importance is that their function is that they anchor the plant. That, that means they help the plant to fix in the soil. That is the one important function is that roots help the plant to fix in the soil. So the roots they hold the soil tightly so by that the plant can stand. If you see the bigger trees, if you see coconut trees, palm trees, even though they are very tall, they can withstand, they can resist the high winds. Even during high winds, the trees, they doesn't fall because their roots, they fix in the soil, they hold the soil so tightly, so firmly. That means they give mechanical support. That is one function. So what is the second function of the roots is they absorb water and minerals from the soil and supply it to the tree. Right. So the water and minerals are absorbed from the soil by the root. Okay, so that is the second function, absorption of water and minerals. These two. So that's the importance of the root. Now what's next is that monocot and dicot roots, that means the rooting pattern of plants is different. So on, uh, we see that on basing the seed type, we divide the plants into two categories, monocot and dicot, right? So if you observe the roots of these two, monocot and dicot, you will find some difference. So you, you don't know, you may not know that what is monocot and dicot, I'll let you know that. You know the seed cotyledons, that means you know the seed structure, seed leaves. So, the seed leaves you have studied in your fifth standard, seed leaves are technically called as cotyledons. So, some seeds they have only one seed leaf, some seeds they have two seed leaves, some seeds they have one cotyledon, they are called as monocot, some seeds they have two cotyledons, they are called as dicot. So, what is the example of a dicot you see? while eating cashew nut. If you see a cashew nut, it's a whole cashew nut. That means the cashew will be like this. This is the nut, cashew nut. If you break open the cashew nut, you will get two cashew halves, two halves like this. You can break open just ground nut also in the same way and Bengal gram also in the same way. If you break open the Bengal gram seed, you will get two equal halves. Those two are two cotyledons. So here you have dicot in the sense, two cotyledons. Monocot in the sense, one cotyledon. So what are the examples of monocotyledons? Rice, wheat, barley, maize, jowar, all these are monocots. That means all the cereals are monocots. So what are the examples of dicots? Gram, pulses, green gram, black gram, Bengal gram, all these are dicot because they have two cotyledons in their seed. So why we are talking all this about here when you are discussing about the root? So there is a relation. So here in an experiment for an activity we have taken monocot seeds and dicot seeds. What is the example of monocot I told? For example, maize. We have taken maize. And what example I told for dicot? Gram. Bengal gram. We have taken. So where you have taken? You have taken two small bowls or katoris 
named as A and B. Now you have taken some wet cotton spread over there. Wet cotton. Cotton you sprinkle some water. Now you have taken here maize. Maize seeds here. Maize. Here you have taken gram. Like this. And you sprinkled water. So on the wet cloth you allowed it for overnight. You soak with the seeds in the wet cotton for the whole night. Then you will find the seeds they get started sprouting. Sprouts in the sense they start producing small baby root and a small baby shoot. Right. So we have observed that change in both the cases in both the categories A and B. So what is the change? Change is that the seeds they produced baby root and baby shoot. Now the question is both do they look alike or not? The root and shoot the baby root and baby shoot of the maize is it exactly like the baby root and baby shoot of the gram? No, it's not. There is a difference. So what kind of difference that we observe if you plant these sprouts in the soil? Right. So when they are very small, you see that the maize, the maize, it has a very thin root, very thin shoot, whereas the Bengal gram, it's having a thick shoot and a thick root. So the maize, it may produce one or two thin hair like roots, whereas the gram, it gives out a thick single root. Now we planted both this. So we have taken in a pot A and B. So this is the plant. This is the maize plant. And this is the gram plant. So here the, you see the root. And here you see the roots. So do you find any difference or do you find both are same? Yes, we find the difference. See, in case of A, that is the maize plant, the roots are arising from the end of the stem. So how are the roots? The roots are fibrous. The roots are like thin fibers. So many roots arising from single point. All these roots are like thin fibers. So such root system is called as fibrous root system. Fibrous roots. Okay. Now let us look at the other case. In case of the gram, there is a main root. A main root. This is the main root called as tap root. Tap root. The tap root, it has got so many root heights. These are the root heights. So here, the main one is called a step root and the other branches of the root are called lateral roots, lateral roots, okay. And there are so many fine hairs which are called as root hairs. So that is the tap root system. Here it is called a step root system. Here it is called as fibrous root system. There is a difference. Right. So the difference is in the form of the roots. So here we are finding two different types of plants, monocots and diocots. That means the seeds which have one seed leaf or monocot seed with two seed leaves are dicots. If you plant a monocot seed, you will get the roots, fibrous roots. If you plant a dicot seed, you get a root, tap root, lateral roots and root haze. Okay. So now, here we are trying to find out the relation. Is there any connection with the kind of root system and to the type of venation? In the previous part of this lesson, the beginning part of the lesson, when we studied about the leaf, there we have studied the venation of leaves, the pattern of veins, the network of veins, how they are arranged in the leaf that was studied. Right. So there we found two types of venation. What was that? 
parallel venation and reticulate venation. Let me draw here. So, here we find parallel venation in case of A. In case of B, we see the reticulate venation. So, now we are trying to find the connection between the type of venation to the type of rooting. So, here we have fibrous roots and tap root. So, in case of reticulate venation, in case of reticulate venation, we will find tap root system. The plants with leaves that has reticulate venation, such plants will have tap root system. The plants that have parallel venation in their leaves, they have fibrous root system. So, here it is parallel and the venation is parallel and the root system is fibrous. So, how does this help us? What do you get from this? Say for example, somebody have shown you one plant, just you observed the leaf, you did not see how the roots are under the soil because generally we cannot see the roots because they are beneath the soil. You cannot see the roots with your naked eye unless until you pull out the plant. So, just you were shown with the leaf outside. So, you have seen the leaf and you could tell that what sort of rooting system that plant has got. Right. You have observed the leaf. The leaf is having parallel veins. So, easily you can say that the roots are fibrous and you found the leaf is having reticulate venation. You could say that you can say that the root system is tap root system. So, it is fixed there. So, just by having a look at the leaf Surely, you can say that what kind of roots it has got under the ground. So, not only leaf, if you are given the seeds, by looking at the seeds also you can tell that. The seeds with a single seed leaf, single cotyledon, they are monocots, they have fibrous root system and parallel venation. And if you are given with a seed with two seed leaves or two cotyledons, you can say that, that it is a dicot plant, it has got reticulate venation in the leaves and tap root system in the root. So, that is all about the roots of the plants. Now, we realized the importance. So, here three things we have studied about the root in this particular lesson that is the importance of root and types of roots and relation between roots and venation. Okay? So, in the importance we have seen that the root help the plant to fix in the soil. That is one function. The second function is it absorption helps in the absorption of water and minerals. See, if you have taken any plant and cut the roots and plant it in the soil, you are watering regularly. Do you think the plant live? In most of the cases, it does not live. But in some cases, the plants have the ability to produce new roots. Of course, in some flowering plants, in flower plants, in the gardens, they follow this technique. But in most of the plants, what happens is that just if you take off the root system and simply you put the stem, especially the herbs, it cannot live because it cannot absorb water by the stem from the soil. It needs the help of roots to absorb the soil. That is what happens. Okay? So, this is all about the root of the plant. So, we studied about the leaf and we studied about the stem and we studied about the root. Now, we are going to the next part of the plant that is the flower. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.